Okay. Hello, everyone. God bless you, brothers and sisters. It is May 12th, 2017, and earlier I posted a video and I took it down because um, an amazing revelation was given to me from the Lord. And so with that said, I'm going to pray and begin. So, dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, I praise you, Father. I glorify you, and I thank you. I thank you for everything you're doing and everything that you're going to do. Holy Spirit, guide my mouth, guide my tongue, guide my words. Take control of this message. Take control of this video. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video. I plead the blood of Jesus over the person that is watching this video. And I ask you, Lord, to guide the one that you want to see this to this channel. Father God, open up their eyes. Make the scales fall off their eyes to see the truth. Father God, open up their ears to hear you and to hear the truth. Spirit of truth, flow through them, guiding them, giving them wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Father God, have your way within them and within me and within this video. I come against any distractions that the enemy may try to bring, and I rebuke any deceiving spirits of the devil in Jesus' name. Spirit of truth, have your way. I glorify you and I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so my mother had a dream. And um, for me, it is a, it is a big deal. Uh, excuse me for my dog. <laughs> Um, but so my mom had, had a dream last night and I don't know if you know, but, um, the night before my son had a dream and I posted, I made a video on it and, um, some people, uh, so before I actually began with this dream, cause it kind of, um, bounces off a little bit of my son's. So anyway, um, speaking about my son's dream, he is not a fighter. There is no hate in his heart. He has a love. He is a lover. <laughs> and he has a love for God. And But spiritually speaking, yes, my son is a fighter. He is a fighter in the spirit because he does not like the devil and he doesn't like the evil spirits that go with him and that attack him. Therefore, he is a prayer warrior and that's what he desires to be. And so in the kingdom of God, yes, spiritually, he is a fighter. And so some people may listen. Um, hear the video and they think that you know I teach him to to hate leaders and and to fight and that's not the case at all because you know um, I I don't hate anybody you know the Bible says we are to hate what God hates and to love what God loves and so that's what I do my best to teach my son those things and whatever else is given to him, it is revealed and given to him by God. And I am only, you know, I only tell the truth. And so he's not a fighter. So for him to have that dream, you know, it is, a, I believe, it's spiritually speaking. And so in everything, you know, uh, discern the spirit and... And pray about what you hear, and please be nice and respectful, and don't make rude comments and come against my son, 
if you don't know the truth, you know, if you are not given, you know, the facts of everything. So that's why I encourage you to, to pray on what you hear. Because the Lord, I mean, if you, you can look at my son and you can see the love of God that he has, you know, it just shines through him. And, and I just glorify Jesus because of that. And so I just, I wanted to make that clear because I think some people were a bit um, confused because of his dream. So on to my mom's dream. Um, I'm going to read you what she wrote. And then I'm going to tell you what, what, what um, was revealed. So it began at my grandmother's house. And my cousin's daughter was looking out the window. And she was looking out the window to the backyard and saw a Learjet turquoise. And it flies by real low and it circled around to the front yard. My mom saw on it was the Red Lobster logo on the side of the plane and like on the tail. It lands and it turns into a truck, but only the back end of the plane turned into the truck. The front part looked like a plane. And what would have been my grandmother's garage was a really large auditorium that was being used for a wedding. And it was for um, a Red Lobster executive named Shannon. Well, in reality, my mother doesn't know anybody named Shannon, and especially an uh, executive of Red Lobster. Um, workers uh, came unloading food and floral garlands and wedding decorations. Someone's hawking the horn. <laughs> Sorry, distractions. See, I rebuke that. So workers came off the plane, and they came, and they were unloading food and floral garlands, wedding decorations, but nobody will tell me what's going on. There is a pond, and it gets loaded with about seven octopuses. Soon, cars arrived, nice cars, and one lady complained that nobody was there to greet her and escort her to the auditorium. She saw a few people that she knew from work when she worked there. And they all told her that it's for a wedding for one of the executives. Heidi from the, the, the team uh, of food decorations took over the kitchen. And my mom threw on a skirt and a top and she stood at the stairs that led from the kitchen to the auditorium. She says that she saw a line of ladies wearing feather angel wings going down the stairs to do their show. And she said that she had a conversation with a woman that was sitting at a table and she would, my mom was trying to get information on this wedding and all she, all the woman said to her was that, I am blessed that he invited us to be a part of this wedding. And that was the end of the dream. So something that stood out to me, well, a, a few things actually, but one of the main ones was Red Lobster. So, um... After a while, um, the Lord gave me some revelation. You know, the color red, biblically, you know, is the blood of Jesus. You know, so that is what the red means. It is blood. Jesus is blood. And lobster, I found some very interesting stuff about lobster. So a lobster symbol meaning deals with cycles and regeneration and protection. 
you know, and regenerate is like to renew, revive, revive an organ. Um, and a lobster, like its shell, it, it sheds its shell. And so I found a site here about lobster dream meanings, and I'm going to read you what the symbol says. It says that, um, okay, it is uh, open to new opportunities. Embrace change and all of the world offers. Open yourself to living life without hiding away. And um, something about the lobster in the shell, it means to come out of its shell, you know. And when I heard that, or when I read that, to come out of its shell, it made me think of us because our body is exactly that. It is a shell and we have a spirit and we have a soul. And so when we are taken to heaven, you know, our flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God, but our spirit can. And so, therefore, the lobster symbolizes that, is of coming out of your shell, of shedding our shell, shedding the past and being revived and renewed and regenerated to something more better. And those people that are covered with the blood. And something also I found really interesting was the color turquoise. The color turquoise symbolizes the river of God, sanctification, healing, life-giving flow of Holy Spirit, and the new Jerusalem which is also known as the bride. It's amazing, the New Jerusalem. So, and so that goes with exactly with the red lobster. So the fact that it was at my grandma's house, the meaning to my grandmother's name is gentle strength. And the little girl that was looking out the window, the meaning of her name is dark and black. Shannon was the executive that was getting married. And his name means little old wise one. Um, and so, or her name, Shannon, her name, his or her, it wasn't even... Um, I guess it would be a him. I don't know. Anyway, but Heidi, the name of Heidi is noble, which makes me think of, you know, Proverbs 31, the noble wife. And that is what the bride of Christ is supposed to be. We're supposed to be noble, you know, and, and righteous is what it means. And so I, those were some things that, that stuck out at me. And so some scripture I was led to was Revelation 3, and I'm going to read from verse 8 to 13. I know all the things you do, and I have opened it. So this is to the, a message to the church in Philadelphia. I know all the things you do, and I have opened a door for you that no one can close. You have little strength. Yet you obeyed my word and did not deny me. Look, I will force those who belong to Satan's synagogue, those liars who say they are Jews but are not, to come and bow down at your feet. They will acknowledge that you are the ones I love. Because you obeyed my command to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. All who are victorious will become pillars in the temple of my God, and they will never have to leave it.
and I will write on them the name of my God, and they will be citizens in the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, that comes down from heaven from my God, and I will also write on them my new name. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. And also Revelation 19.9 says, The angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And he added, These are true words that come from God. Amazing. Amazing. So I just want to read to you this scripture, Revelation 21, verse 8 down. But the fearful, the fearful, unbelieving, and the abom abominable and murderers, whoremongers and sorcerers, idolaters and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burned with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone, most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. And it goes on um, and describes <coughs> sorry about my dog okay <coughs> uh, so Revelation 21 verse 2 says I John saw the holy city the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband you know and it is those, those in Revelation 3 that God is talking about. Revelation, you know, 311, the Church of Philadelphia is the New Jerusalem. And I believe that this dream, you know, the, the lobster, that the shedding of its shell, it's time for for the bride to shed its shell and come out of it and go home, you know, for, for the soul and the spirit to leave its body and to be taken to heaven, you know, to marry <laughs> the little old wise one. You know, pray about everything that you hear. Something I found also very interesting real quick before I end this video was the fact that my mom had a dream and it was of a, in the, you know, that there was a pond with seven octopus. Now, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what that means, but also my son had a dream also of an octopus and and, but the octopus, um, one of its tentacles went through Obama's ear and out the other side. Like my son saw Obama being tortured by the octopus. And my mom also has a dream of an octopus. So there's something here that the Lord is speaking to my family. He has spoke to my, to my son something. And now to my mother something. And 
the Lord reminded me of the fact that in my son's dream, Trump went to heaven. You know, so he was shown people in in heaven that people went to Trump's funeral and and then he was shown heaven. So is was that a warning of the death of America in Revelation 18 also is when the rapture is. You know, yes, the pre-tribulation rapture. In Revelation 18, it also says something. I'll read it to you real quick. Okay, so in Revelation 18, verse 4, says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues which means her judgment. Whose judgment? America's. Babylon. You know. And then it goes into more of that. But I'm going to read to you one other verse here. It says, And the light, verse 23, and the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by their sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. And so, you see, it talks about the destruction of Babylon, which, you know, I, it is America, and the Lord keeps revealing that, that Babylon will fall within an hour. It will get destroyed. You know, it will get burned with fire, and, and that will be part of it, you know, it, it's judgment. And but those who are found in Christ, the bride of Christ, we are to come out of her, you know. And so God is saying that. And people, you know, pray about what you hear. Ask the Lord to give you confirmation of the truth, you know, because you do not want to be left behind. You know, I just read to you Revelation 3. We are not called for his judgment. You know, pray that you are accounted worthy to escape these things because not nobody's righteous. You know, it is only with the blood of Jesus, you know, in, for God to, to forgive us for, for the sins that we commit and, you know, we are to repent of those things. And we are to repent, you know, daily and pray that we are accounted worthy, you know, to be rescued. You know, I do believe that if you have faith in the Lord to rescue you from what is coming, you believe that, you know, God will save the ones that are his children the innocent, you know, do you really think that these little babies and that these little kids are going to be appointed to his wrath, to his judgment? Do you really think he's going to let his children suffer such torture? You know, I don't know who you serve, but I serve of God of love. And I, have, and I experience his love, you know. And it is the most amazing love you can ever feel and come to know. And so I just pray for each person that hears this video, and even those who don't hear this video, I pray for them to experience the love of Jesus Christ. Because He died for you. Because He loves you. And He doesn't want you, you know, to be 
left behind. He doesn't want you to suffer and to pay for the wages of your sin when he already paid for it. So, God bless you. I love you. And I'll talk to you later. Comment below. Tell me what um, you received from all of this, if you will. If you don't, you know, no big deal. And may Jesus bless you. Talk to you later.